all those years ago. This local New York that turned into an American phenomenon that now has turned into an international, not even a ministry, but a movement. Brooklyn은 꾸준히 아이들의 가정을 방문하고 그가 시작한 프로그램을 통해 수많은 극빈 상태에 놓여 있는 가난하고 버려진 아이들을 돌보았습니다. 빌 목사는 12살 나이에 알코올 중독자의 엄마로부터 길거리에 버려졌기에 그는 소외된 아이들이 느끼고 있는 심정을 잘 알고 있습니다. 다행히도 길거리에 버려진 그를 지나가던 크리스천이 발견하여 주력교 캠프에 등록해 주었습니다. 빌 월스 목사는 이제 74세로 고령의 나이가 되었습니다. 지난 40년간의 매추어 사역을 통해 20개국이 넘는 곳에서 매주 30만 명의 아이들이 주류학교에 참석하고 있습니다. 그래서 우리는 당신의 도움이 필요합니다. 지금 이 시간에도 길거리를 방황하며 누군가를 기다리고 있는 이 아이를 도와주세요. So why have I spent my life doing this? Committed to this cause? Why? Because I know what can happen when one person, one ordinary person, chooses to take care of one ordinary little kid that nobody knows. And when that all comes together, something bigger than all of us is the end result. Please welcome Ms. Yanni Woos to the stage. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Good? I was told that it's important uh, for Korean to have lunch together. So you had a good lunch? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Give the organizer a round of applause, okay? So far, I'm very fortunate. So I'm so, so happy to be here today. And thanks to Pastor Yang for inviting me to share with you what Metro World Child has done in the past 43 years. Um, I know that most of you are Korean, and like what Deacon Jones introduced me, I used to work in the corporate world, and I went to Seoul very often in my old corporate job with Hewlett Packard and Oracle. And when I had lunch or dinner, with the senior executives there with a major corporation that told me some Korean. So actually I can say, 감사합니다. 안녕하세요. If that makes sense. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good, right? <laughs> okay, so um, who was here last night um, attend Pastor Bill's session? Can you raise your hand? Okay, some of you and then some of you are not. And who just watched what happened outside in the, our Sunday school truck? Was it, was it the first time you watched, saw it? Can you raise your hand? Was it the first time? Okay, a lot of you are first time. Okay, that's good. Good stuff. So, most of you have heard Pastor Bill sharing last night. You have heard the story, how Metro has become the largest Sunday school in the world, serving 300 2,000 kids every week in over 20 countries. How did that happen? In New York, we started in New York. We have a bus ministry. We, every week, we pick up the kids um, um, in their neighborhood. So I'm a bus captain too. I'm a Sunday school teacher, a bus captain. I have my own bus route. So Friday afternoon is my time to visit the kids in my neighbor in the neighborhood and saturday i take the school bus to pick them up and come to sunday school in our center in Brooklyn. many kids they came and not just they came their parents their grandparents 43 years ago were picked up by pastor bill's 
Sunday school bus attending the Sunday school. Their parents attended, and now the grandchildren attending the Sunday school with Metro. Three generations. Three generations. And you also saw just now the truck. We take this Metro Sunday School truck all over five bureaus in New York City to different communities, the same time, same place, every week. So people know who we are. In fact, there was an article a few years ago. They said the secrets only New Yorkers know. Metro World Show is the number 10 secret. Because if you are a true New Yorker, you will know us. And you saw the, the t-shirt that our staff member wearing. You saw that very cute red color t-shirt. That's our bulletproof vest in the challenging neighborhood that we do Sunday school. Because people know us, gang members, drug dealers, they, when they saw us, they know we're from Metro, they leave us alone. Because they know we are actually helping three generations in the challenging community. They know we care. Let me talk to you a little bit about our international metro. So now you heard about the New York, and let me take you to outside New York, outside US. Kenya in Africa is the largest country that we do Sunday school. We have 190,000 kids last week attending Sunday school. We preach gospel to 100, 190,000 children in Kenya alone. I want you to think what it means. How much money, effort, time to require to preach to 190,000 people. But we have done it every week in Kenya. God has opened the doors in Africa solidly. Last year, four new African countries, their government invited Metro World Child to come to New York, to come to their country to help their children. You don't hear government inviting foreign Christian mission organization to their country to help their kids. You don't hear that. So this is really something Pastor Bill has done for over 50 years. People know us, they know the credibility, and the word has spread out from um, Kenya to all other countries. This new staff member in this new country just went through two weeks of training a couple weeks ago, and we are ready to go. And how did that happen? Because there are some Asian businessmen. They saw what God has done for us. They saw the open doors, and they want to, be, they want to invest in what has bearing fruit. So if, that's why we're so grateful to Pastor Yang, because he is also taking us to Korea. We are trusting God that there will be people seeing the vision, seeing what we do. We, not only that we can help the church in Korea, but also at the same time, we are looking for people who want to be partnering with us in the mission field. And next, let's share with, let me share with you Metro Nepal. Do you know where Nepal is? Nepal is Southeast Asia, a small country next to India. That is a Muslim country. Last year, we started with one Sunday school location. By the end of the year, during the pandemic, we trained these local churches, partnering with them, teach them how to do Sunday schools, and also at the same time, show them what can be done. By the end of the year, we have 150 Sunday school locations. Let us give God a praise. Give God a praise. This is God's work. And 100 
affected during pandemic. So why I'm sharing this with you? In fact, let me just uh, invite Pastor Kenny. He is a head of Metro Nepal. He just landed back from Nepal last night. Actually, this morning, right, Pastor Kenny? Um, he will share with us uh, maybe the highlights of how it happened and what has made the, the. Let's welcome Pastor Kenny. Jameson. 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 That is the Nepali introduction. Whenever you meet a Christian, do you say Jameson? Jameson. Jameson. That means victory in Jesus. Amen. In Nepal, it is a persecuted nation. You cannot share the gospel freely in the streets. When I was there, I was told, do not share the gospel in the streets. I said, got it. I could land myself in jail for five years. I said, got it. And the first word I heard was, Jameson. When I said, what is that name? Victory of Jesus. Well, let me share. I landed in JFK just this early morning. Got home at 3 a.m. And I'm here. Because of one man, Pastor Bill Wilson. Put your hands together for Pastor Bill Wilson. I do not speak with the Pali. I don't understand the Pali. New to the culture, never been to. And then four years ago, God gave me a vision. Flying from Doha, from Kathmandu to Doha, back to New York City, God has spread the gospel across the nation of Nepal while I was in the air using Metro Sunday School. Amen? That was four years ago, not knowing anyone. God just called me there. Well, I just came back. I was there for two weeks. In two weeks, Metro Nepal hosted two conferences. One in Central, one in Far West. Over 150 churches came to those conferences. Amen? Over 150. We start with zero. 320 pastors, teachers, and Sunday school teachers came to these conferences. Amen? Amen. Jameson? Jameson. We're almost there. We're almost there. Jameson, one more time. Jameson. From zero locations, in the shack in the slum of Tripperschul, in the shadows of Kathmandu, very similar to like the South Bronx of New York City. You, don't, you understand what I'm talking about? God sovereignly filled with His grace by the power of the Holy Spirit has brought us both. We trained over 250 locations. We have an active partnerships in 150 locations. You tell me what? Jameson, victory in Jesus? Victory in Jesus. It's all for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So what do we take from here? Just two steps, please. Pastors, Sunday school teachers, leaders, I ask that you take this coming opportunity that Jenny's talking about. Come to the core training this summer. Come. I am not a children pastor. I am not gifted in children ministry. But when I see a good thing, yeah. right there. You, yeah. you see where I'm coming from, right? Yes. When I see a good thing, that's where I'm coming from. So I took out people from my church to get trained. No more is training. I want to say training. Training. It is the best training. It's totally different. You just saw a glimpse of it. Bring your people come to the intensive training. Number two, let us be your missionaries. Let us be your hands. Let us be your feet. Together with Metro. All across the world. So now you're going to ask me why Metro, 40 years of proven experience across 23 nations. That's number one. Number two, more importantly than that, <coughs> it is the sincerity. It is the character of the people behind it. I do just witnessed it maybe in about in that 20 minutes. You see the passion, you see the heart. Yeah. Those are real people. Yeah. Those are real disciples of Jesus Christ. Jameson? Jameson. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. The Lord bless you. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. That's exciting, isn't it? In one year, do you think that you can do it? Do you want to? Do you want to? So, after you hear these stories, you'll be asking yourself like, okay, they are great stories, so what does that have to do with me? Right? Because 
you're thinking, what can Metro do for me at my church? This is a very practical question. This is why you're here. Number one, you heard Pastor Bill speak yet last night for some of you. And you, if you didn't come last night, you need to come tonight. He is not only a, has a PhD in Old Testament, he is a med, has a medical degree from University of Paris. He has been speaking all over the world. You heard of his story, he was in Ukraine three times last year in the front line of, front line, front line of the war. And he bus the kids, women, and bring the food and water. How did that happen? Because over 20 years ago, when the Ukraine revival happened, he was invited by the major churches in the capital, Kiev, to speak, to train, to cast the vision, the connection, the possibility. As an example, that's why Metro can do so much more than just a children's ministry, just Sunday school. And secondly, Pastor Kenny spoke about the training. We are possible trained around the world. With 50 years of experience. We have hardcore training just coming up three days in Brooklyn. It will teach you how to write the, how to write the curriculum, how to do Sunday school, and they will equip you solid three days. Secondly, we also have a four month internship in Brooklyn, New York, starting from March. You will be with us, not just in theory, you will be with us on the street, preaching the gospel to the children, and also take them to the Sunday school in our center. Pastor Bill always says, if you can survive in New York, you have a better chance to be a missionary anywhere in the world. So, do you have to be a missionary to attend this training? No, you don't. Either you're already a Sunday school teacher, you're in children's ministry, or you just want to be equipped to do what you just seen. You have just seen it. Or God has put that mission in your heart a long time ago. And you go, hmm, do I want to do I want to be stirred again by Pastor Bill? Or do I want to be moved into actions? So this could be an opportunity for you to learn, be equipped. Or you have the foreign mission in your heart. Come to internship program. If this is something you want to do, Pastor Bill will personally coach you and get you equipped and get ready. We have so many open doors in Africa and we need you if you are offered. So Metro is not just a Sunday school, not just in a children's ministry, it's actually a mission organization. Finally, I got some people ask me question. Um, why a Taiwanese girl, after working for 25 years, end up serving full time in a children's ministry in Brooklyn, New York? Four years ago, I was happily living in Singapore, living in a bubble. If, if you understand, Pastor Bill always say that Singapore or many Asian countries, I think New Jersey is probably like, we are very sheltered in Singapore. I went to a mission trip to Philippines to first time I met Metro Rochelle, met Pastor Bill in a garbage dump. Some of you I trust that you have, you know um, a lot about children or ministry about children. You probably have seen the pictures that kids live in the garbage dump. Have you? Maybe you have seen it, maybe you have watched the documentary just I did, that kids live in a cemetery. But when I went there, So when I went there, I thought I had all the answers, thinking that I know what they need, how to help them. 
But when I walk in, walk step into the garbage dump, and I touch the wound of body of Christ, and I smell the un unexplainable smell of the garbage, and I feel and I hear, my whole sensation tells me that this place need help, and the urgency. It's it, it just burning inside of me, and I just couldn't get rid of it after five days. I was so close, face to face, with the urgency of these needs. I went back to Singapore. I couldn't stop talking about Metro and talking about what I've seen. And I told everybody, my friends, I was in the business world. I should be talking about my business, but no, I talk about everybody. Please sponsor a child. Please sponsor a child because it's a life and death in the in the garbage shop, in the cemetery. And thirty-four dollars for a Kenya kids. They can get food for months. Every day has a meal. I couldn't stop talking about it. Because the fire, once you get lit up, if you allow the Holy Spirit, allow that urgency to speak to you and shape and move you. You, just like what Pastor preached last night, the, the, the love of the Christ constrains us. It will force you to do something that you never thought. So, um, after the five days, and after three trips in six months to Manila, I read Pastor Bill's book. If you're outside, you can see Pastor Bill's book right outside. He's six books, I read three times each one. And I said, I need to, I need to know what I want to do. I need to know, like what Pastor Bill, the question he asked me. And I thank you for that question. What do you want to do for the rest of your life? What do you want to do for the rest of your life? I was 45 at the time. And allow that question to torture me, if I may use that word. Give me the sleep, sleepless night. And force me to look at my life, which I thought it was a good life, a meaningful life, until I find something even better. So. I pack up my life in Singapore. It's kind of funny, after living for 45 years and your life end up in four paper boxes and two luggages. And I came to New York, living in Brooklyn and ghetto. On a Friday afternoon, my visitation time, I knock at the door in a project building. And this is a family with three kids. And I knock on the door. It's weird. The door is closed. But the door was never closed because it's broken. You know, it's very common in the project building that they never close the door because there's nothing inside and you know. So I asked the, the neighbor kids, which I also pick her up to Sunday school on Saturday, and say, hey, what's going on with this family? And she said, they moved. For a few seconds, I didn't understand what she said. She said, they moved. I said, what do you mean by they moved? I said, last Saturday, when I dropped them off, and when I, after I gave them a hug and said, God, Jesus loves you, I love you too. And these three kids went back to me and told me, see you next week, see you. I said, what do you mean by they moved? Yeah, he said, yeah, they moved. I couldn't stop thinking about that three kids. I keep asking myself, have I, have I hugged them hard enough before they disappear in front of my eyes? I ask myself, 
When I say, Jesus loves you, I love you too, do I look deep enough into their eyes and make them really feel that somebody loves them? So, I couldn't, I couldn't get over it for quite some time. I don't know if there's somebody in your neighborhood that you see them every day, and one day they suddenly disappear from your life, and you wonder what's going on, and what's your response to that? Maybe some of the children in your neighborhood, you don't want to wait until they move. A year and a half ago, a TV station from Taiwan, a secular TV station actually, they heard about my story. They knew that I lived in New York in a ghetto with my background. They came to visit, they came to interview me follow me a whole day in Brooklyn, in the office, and then they follow me to my bus route, to the project building, actually. They're very daring. They actually carry the camera and walk with me to the project building and knock on the door and do visitations. After the whole day, that, that reporter asked me a question, well, I'll wrap it up for the, for the day. We sat right outside the project building in a little dirty park. She said, Yanni, how long are you going to do this? I got that question a lot, especially for my corporate world. You know, all the senior executive, they think that I couldn't survive for more than maybe three days. <laughs> and she asked me the question. And I thought about it. Because I never thought about how long. Because when I decided this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, and this is it. So, this is why I told her. Maybe I should just share with you, and maybe that will make sense to some of her. I told her, if you are so close, so close to the needs of these children. And you're so close. You see the urgency of these children that you all know, we all know. How can you leave? You can't leave. That was just like what Pastor Bill preached last night. The love of Christ constrains us. That will keep us in the ministry. My name is Yen Wu, I'm from Metro Orchard, I think.